Up until now, we've been working exclusively with text-based interactions. We've generated responses, built chat conversations, and even created structured data. But modern AI models can handle much more than that. Today, we'll explore multimodal capabilities. Multimodal means the AI can understand and process different types of content. In addition to text, we can work with images, PDFs, audio files, and more. In this lesson, we'll focus on image analysis. Then in the next lesson, we'll move on to PDF processing. Let's jump into VS Code and see how to analyze images with the AI SDK. Let's start by creating the route handler. So navigate to the API folder and create a new folder called multimodal chat. Now here's something interesting. Remember the chat route handler we built earlier? We can actually reuse this exact same code for image analysis. The AI SDK handles both text and images, so we don't need to write any special logic. Let's copy this route.ts file from the chat folder and paste it into our new multimodal chat folder. I will, however, simplify the messages property. And for the sake of simplicity, let's also remove the token usage code. We define an async post request handler. We extract messages from the request. We call stream text passing in model and messages. And we return result dot to UI message stream response. This is all the code we need for the backend. The same code that processes chat messages will automatically handle images when we send them. Now let's build a UI component. In the UI folder, create a new folder called multimodal chat with a page.tsx file inside. We will use the chat UI component as our starting point since most of the functionality is similar. So copy the code from UI slash chat slash page.tsx and paste it into multimodal chat page.tsx. First, let's update the component name from chat page to multimodal chat page. By default, use chat makes a request to slash API slash chat. Our API, however, lives in multimodal chat. So let's correct the API endpoint. For that, we rely on the default chat transport class from the core AI package. So import it at the top. Import default chat transport from AI. As an argument to the use chat hook, we pass a transport object with the API endpoint. So transport is the key. The value is new default chat transport. And to this, we specify API slash multimodal chat. This will send the messages to the new route handler. All right, now comes the interesting part. We need to enable file uploads in this form. To handle files properly, we will need to track two things, which files are selected and a reference to the file input. At the top, let's import use ref along with use state. Inside the component, let's set up our state. First, we'll track the selected files. So use state, the state variable is files, the setter function is set files, and the initial value is undefined. This is going to be of type file list or undefined. File list is the browser's type for file selections. Next, we need a reference to the file input element. So const file input ref is equal to use ref with an initial value of null and the type is HTML input element. This will allow us to programmatically clear the file input after submission. Now let's modify the form to support file uploads. Currently, our form has one input and button side by side. We need to add a file attachment option. So let's restructure the layout to stack elements vertically. Inside the form element, wrap the form children in a new container. So div class name is equal to flex, flex column, gap three. This creates a vertical layout with spacing between our existing input plus button and the new file attachment UI will add in a second. And while we're at it, let's also adjust the main container padding. So find the padding Y24 class and change it 
to padding top 12 and padding bottom 36. This gives us more room at the bottom of our expanded form. All right, now for the file attachment feature. Above the existing input and button div container, but inside our new flex column container, let's add an attachment button. Div tag with a label inside, and the attachment icon and text will go here. On the label, we will set HTML4 is equal to file upload. We'll then add some Tailwind CSS to make this pretty. So on the div, class name, flex, item center, cap2. And on the label, we specify more classes. We're using a label element styled as a button. The HTML4 attribute will connect it to our file input. Within the label, let's add a paperclip icon inside. I'm going to paste an SVG icon, but feel free to just type the text attach. After the icon, let's add text that changes based on whether files are selected. So curly braces, if files exist and files are selected, we render dollar curly braces, files.length, file or files based on the number attached. Otherwise, we render attach files. So this shows attach files by default or the number of files if any are selected. Now we need the actual file input. So after the label, still inside our div flex container, we add a new input element. We specify ID is equal to file upload. So this matches our label HTML4 attribute. Type is equal to file. Class name is equal to hidden. So this is a Tailwind CSS class, which will hide the input element. On change, event, and if event.target.files exist, set files, event.target.files. We will also set the multiple attribute, and then ref is equal to file input ref. Quite a few attributes, so let me explain one more time. The ID, file upload, matches our labels HTML4, so clicking the label opens the file picker. We hide the input with class name is equal to hidden, because we're using the styled label instead. The onChange handler updates our state when files are selected. The multiple attribute allows selecting several files at once. And we attach our ref so we can clear the input programmatically later. Now that we have our file input, the next step, we need to update the form submission to include the selected files. Let's look at the current handle submit function. You can see currently it only sends text but the send message function can accept both text and files. Let's update it. Text colon input and files set to our state variable files. With ESX shorthand syntax, we can specify just files. We are now passing files along with the text to our API endpoint. But we should also clear the file selection after sending. So set files to undefined. And then the file input element itself needs to be cleared too. If file input ref dot current file input ref dot current dot value is equal to empty string. So if the ref exists, clear its value. All right, now the form properly handles both text and file submissions, clearing everything after each message. The last step is updating our messages display to show images. Now you should know that files are part of message parts with a type equal to file. In the route handler, if you inspect the UI message type, you will see that it has a parts property and that is an array of type UI message part. And UI message part is a union of several types. We already had a look at the text UI part earlier. Type is set to text and text is the text content. Now let's inspect the file UI part. You can see this has type set to file and media type is the MIME type of the file. For example, image slash JPEG. File name refers to the actual file name and URL is the URL of the file. It can be both a local file or a remote URL. But now that you understand this file part structure, 
Let's look at the message rendering code, which seemed like an overkill when dealing with text. We have message.parts.map, and we have a switch statement that processes different part types. Currently, it only handles text. Because we did this verbose implementation earlier, supporting files is now straightforward. After the text case, add case file return null. But we want to display images, not return null. So let's check if the file is an image. File parts include a media type property as we just saw. So if part.media type exists, we check if it starts with image slash. Discovers all image formats like image slash JPEG, image slash PNG, etc. So if it's an image, we render it using Next.js image component. Make sure to import image from next slash image. We set key is equal to dollar curly braces, message dot ID, followed by index to make sure this is unique. We set source is equal to part dot URL since each file part provides a URL for the source. And optionally, we will set file name for accessibility. So part dot file name. And if that doesn't exist, attachment followed by index. We will set width to 500 and height to 500, but you can adjust these values. Make sure to return the image component. All right, our page component is now ready to handle images. Let's test this out. In the browser, navigate to slash UI slash multimodal chat. And now you should see the same UI as the chat page but with a file attachment button. Click attach files and select an image. I have attached one of my YouTube thumbnails and you can see the text updates to one file attached. Type something like what's in this image and hit enter. You'll see your image appear in the chat. This is followed by AI's analysis. For my question, what's in this image? The AI responds with this image appears to be a graphic or presentation slide related to Next.js, a popular React framework. It has a black background with white text. The text stream text is in the top left corner and Next.js is prominently displayed in large font in the center with some sparkles or star icons next to it. There's a photo of a smiling man on the right hand side of the image outlined in white with dark hair and a goatee wearing a black shirt. The overall design looks modern and tech oriented. As you can see, the model can see and understand the image content, allowing for natural conversations about what it sees. You can try follow-up questions, ask about specific details or colors on the image. The AI maintains context and can discuss the image throughout the conversation. All right, let me quickly recap what we've implemented. We started with a route handler that was pretty much a copy of our existing route handler from the chat route. The AI SDK's design means our existing chat handler supports images as well. For the UI, we improved the chat interface with file upload capabilities. We used useState to track selected files and use ref to manage the file input element. We created a file attachment button that shows the upload status. The form submission now handles both text and files, passing them together to the send message function. We made sure to clean up properly by clearing both the state and the input element. Finally, we extended the message rendering to display images. By checking the part type and media type, we can show images in line with the conversation. For our next topic, let's learn how to process PDFs with the AI SDK.